Welcome back to the Authentic Christian Podcast. You're probably already noticing we're not in the studio. We are actually on the campsite that we filmed Campfire Stories. So this is a, a special edition podcast of the Campfire Stories. We're going to have 10 episodes. Um, we had 10 short films that we filmed uh, around this campsite uh, here in, in Mississippi where we live. And so um, we're going to have 10 episodes of the podcast. It's going to be special edition. And we're going to do our best to not have our notes fly <laughs> off the table into the lake and uh, do our best to to keep the wind from making too much of a, a uh, problem for our audio. Thanks for all of you who have watched the Campfire Stories. Um, before we get into actually episode one of the Campfire Stories and talking about the message behind that episode, Tucker, just um, maybe fill everybody in on kind of how this project started and what really the goal for it was overall. Yeah. So we appreciate all of you who've watched the podcast. Um, I guess while we were doing the podcast, we just kind of threw around this idea of what if we went out and camped one night um, and just like filmed a bunch of different shots of us doing stuff, camping, like cooking and uh, fishing, um, just a lot of that, and then try to put like a Bible spin behind it. And so we kind of like started um, thinking of different things that we could um, match like daytime and nighttime to base it around like camping, but also like campfire stuff. And so we kind of pulled different stories from the Bible, kind of put a story behind it visually um, on camera, um, and kind of with the purpose of parabol parabolic teaching. Um, you know, Jesus taught in different ways. And so I guess we first thought, let's just try to tell some parable stories of camping and see where that goes. Yeah. I mean, Scott, for everybody that's watching, you know, Tucker mentioned parabolic teaching. Um, how would you explain if somebody asked you what a parable is? Because Jesus used them all the time, you know. In some sections, Jesus used it so much in Scripture that at one point it even says Jesus didn't teach them anything that wasn't in a parable. Or obviously, Jesus, there are certain teaching sections where he's speaking pretty clearly. But he taught so much in parables that Scripture says that. Yeah, in school, they used the expression, I think, uh, parables were were a, a heavenly lesson or a heavenly message that was told through an earthly story. That's so right. You would get a principle uh, taught through an illustration that was like narrative driven most of the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think the word parable, it comes from the two Greek words, para and balo. So balo, I think I even said this in the podcast, but balo is to throw, right? Like a baseball, you throw a baseball, right? Yeah. And para is beside. Yeah. So to throw one story beside another. So like you said, an earthly story that has a heavenly meaning. And so as we, you know, Tucker said, we, we decided yeah. we we're going to come out and just camp and film Bible lessons. And then we started talking about you know, the Bible actually sort of describes our life on earth sort of like a camping trip. Yeah. I mean, throughout the Bible, you see the Bible talk about sojourners. You know, we, we've talked about how Abraham lived in a tent. And we'll talk about all that when we get to episode one. Mm -hmm. But we saw a lot of parallels really with that idea. And we were like, hey, weird. Maybe we should, <laughs> you know, sort of elaborate on some of these messages that the Bible gives. And yeah. obviously Jesus was the perfect teacher. So our parables are going to be nowhere near, you know, as effective as his were but just trying to take that lead from him and, and go from there. So it actually kind of got bigger than what we thought. Um, you know, we, we wrote down 10 ideas in the very beginning. I mean, we we're sitting on a computer and we just wrote down 10 ideas of what we thought it could be. Um, nighttime, daytime based on campfire and the camping stuff. But then we kind of wrote out this little story that kind of went in with these six guys visually, but really with, hopefully we were able to pull it off, which hopefully you guys, um, saw that we were able to pull it off that, um, as, the guys did these things during camping um it was able to come across visually what was the message was all about um so i'm excited yeah me too all right so we'll go ahead and dive into it um so episode one a lot of people you know i remember one girl on instagram she saw episode one was like i don't know five minutes mm -hmm. and she was like why is it only five minutes <laughs> so we explained in the comments well look you know the first episode is really supposed to be almost like an introduction or like a uh, like a teaser to get you to realize hey we're having 10 more episodes of the podcast. You know, yeah. we're not going to start season two up until like July again. Um, but this is sort of like an interim. And so in episode one, we talked about how uh, camping out on earth was what we actually titled it. And what we want to do in this episode really is just look through the Bible, see what the Bible talk uh, talks about with regards to us camping out on earth. And so one of the things that we did at the very beginning of when we first got here is when you go, to, when you go camping, 
you obviously have to have a, pl- have a place to sleep at night. So what's the first thing you do when you get to a campsite? Uh, you got to set up the tent. <laughs> you got to set up your tents. And if you go back and watch episode one of the podcast, you'll see very two different experiences, two yeah. very different experiences. I yeah. had a good one. Scott, yeah, yeah, good Scott, one. <laughs> Scott, tell us about your setting up your tent. Tell okay. us about your experience. Well, uh, you set it down on the ground and you pull it apart and you pop it up and you're about done in five minutes. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. So John, who we work with at GBN, um, John let us borrow his tent and it's literally like you set it down, you pop it up and it's, it, you can probably see behind Tucker's maybe in his, I don't know. It's right yeah. here. The tent took like what, five minutes to set up? <laughs> yeah. There's no, you don't have to feed any rods through or anything no. like that. Most you have to do is stake it down. Yeah. Right? So when the, when the, the uh, edited episode got together, it was kind of funny because you look at their tent. Their tent was so easy to put up. And then me and Sam are over here with like an authentic <laughs> tent, I guess you'd say. Yeah, it's very authentic. And yeah. me and Sam, like we basically connected the, you know, we had like put, laid the tent out and ran the rods through before connecting to the ground. We were literally on YouTube watching videos of how to put a tent together because I haven't been camping in like <laughs> multiple years. So we're sitting here like looking at them with their perfectly completed tent. And Sam and I are over here on YouTube with not really good cell service in this area. And then, what? okay, so tell them, you'll probably be able to throw a clip in there, but oh, tell yeah. them what the funniest part of us putting our tent in was. Yes, yeah, so if you're watching around, you'll probably be seeing a, um, oh, what do you call it, a cast iron skillet. Yeah, cast iron yeah. skillet, yeah. We forgot the hammer. We brought everything, all the yeah. equipment except for a hammer, too. We had to drive the, the, <laughs> the stakes into the ground to keep your yeah. tent from blowing away on this, like, point that we're on, which obviously is very windy now. Yeah, I think you noticed. I think it's you. It may have been Sam, but just sitting there and beating the stake into the ground with a yeah. frying pan. I think, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> how are we going to drive these stakes into the, the ground? Yeah. And we couldn't do it with our hands. And so, I don't know, we had, like, two cast iron skillets. Yeah. And so, if you go back and watch episode one, of course, Tucker can probably throw a shot of it up, but you'll see us hammering in the tent <laughs> pegs with a cast iron skillet. Which, there was a lot of footage of it, but uh, yeah. we didn't want to make it too humorous. Yeah, they didn't want to make fun <laughs> of us too bad. So but so we got here and we set up our tents. And so one of the things when you think about that is, believe it or not, the Bible talks about our bodies being a tent like a lot. Yeah. Um, what are some passages that you guys, I mean, I know we've talked about this already so much, like in our own conversations as preparing for you know, the filming of episode one and the trip, and then also getting ready for this. But, you know, what are some things that come to your mind? Well, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, one, right? Yeah, 2 Corinthians 5, one. if you guys are watching, you want to follow along. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and verse 1. You want to read it? You, want me to read it? you go ahead. I'll read it. I've got the New King James. Uh, this is second letter to Corinth, all right? Um, and so the Apostle Paul is writing through inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and he says... For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So in 2 Corinthians 5.1, he talks about our bodies being a what? A tent. A tent. tent. Yeah. Temporary. And a tent is, go ahead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what? I was going to say, yeah, it's temporary. It's not something you intend to uh, yeah. uh, lay down a foundation and, and kind of camp out there forever, you know, no. put up residence. Yeah. And that, so a tent, it's a temporary dwelling place. Well... That's good for guys like us who right now, if you're trying to wonder, you know, when did they film this? It seems very cold. They're Aaron has a <laughs> scarf and they're all dressed up. Well, we decided to film it in February. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're wondering why, it's because I moved to Mississippi two years ago and I was under the assumption that it was always warm in Mississippi. Oh, but I'm learning very wrong. quickly. <laughs> yeah, they did. They did. So as you can see. So Second yeah. Corinthians chapter five and verse one talks about our bodies being a tent, which means it's a temporary dwelling place. Which when something's temporary you don't really, you don't put as much importance on, I guess, the layout of it, right? I mean, yeah. think about in, in episode one, two, the little part of the script at the beginning where we talked about, uh, were we upset that we had to leave or fill, mm-hmm. fill somebody in if they've maybe seen, not they're seeing this, but they haven't seen episode one. Yeah. So this is all spoilers. So just, we're, we're assuming that you've watched all from of episode them. one, if from we episode can, one, if you can yeah. spoil anything in episode one. So yeah. Um, with the episode one, the setup was all about, I think, Maybe this could go in the wrong direction, but the setting up your reservation, the idea of like, have you made your reservation yet? Um, that was like I'm, the I'm refer- question. I'm referencing the beginning where I said, are you guys going to miss your... Oh, you're talking about... Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, I said like, are you guys going to miss your warm bed? And Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, each episode pretty much has a dialogue scene that try to set up the rest, figuratively set up the rest of the lesson. Um, and in that one, um, I think Aaron, you asked Scott like, hey, are you, you going to miss your warm bed at home? Yeah, and Scott said, like, no, nah, it's just, just just for a little just a while. a couple of days yeah. or something like that. And just then, for a couple of days, yeah. And I was the one who was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to miss mine. Yeah. Um, and, and the whole parallel we're trying to get at is 
you know, when we came camping, all right, mm-hmm. when we came camping and filmed it originally, it was like October. Yeah, it was like, yeah. So it was beautiful. The weather was gorgeous, right? We prayed yeah. for good weather. It was beautiful weather. And let's take, for instance, now, right? It's mm-hmm. freezing colder now. It's like in the 30s. <laughs> and we were like, no, if if our life is supposed to be temporary on this earth, we can put up with some cold weather for yeah. one day to <laughs> film some episodes of the podcast, all right? So when things are temporary, like, it's okay for us to be sitting outside, mm-hmm. fairly cold, for a few hours because we know what in a few hours we're gonna get to do what yeah, we're gonna go home we're gonna yeah. go home it's whenever we in between episodes we're gonna go into this tent we're gonna yeah. warm up a little bit we got food for lunch and dinner yeah. so we know that we can sit here uncomfortably cold for you know 20 30 minutes to do an episode yeah it'd be much more miserable if you just thought man this is it forever <laughs> this is it yeah. this is all i got yeah. nothing to look forward to no no hope in this situation it's not gonna get better no and if that's the way so in a sense like how Scott, how would you, I mean, we're kind of talking, how would you parallel that with like our life on earth compared to eternity? Oh, I mean, exactly that. I mean, I'd just say, I mean, you got to realize, uh, as Christians anyway, you're, you're, you're looking forward to heaven. I mean, you're going to go through a lot here and, and you know that, I mean, you read that in the scriptures. Uh, it's not, it's not a secret and you're told as much. I mean, as a matter of fact, the first century church was told they're going to be persecuted, right? Yeah. I mean, they yeah. knew it was going to be bad. What got them through was the hope that resurrection, right? Yeah. That idea of where they're going to be afterward that, you know what, this is temporary. Might not be fun right now. Uh, it might be painful, sorrowful, but, uh, it's going to be over one day and then I won't have to go back to it ever again. I'll be home. I won't be in that temporary place anymore. Yeah. And that's like us. We're cold, but it's like, look, Mm -hmm. we know no matter how cold it gets and how, you know, we're not going to get frostbite when it's in the thirties. So it's like, it's not that cold. So we know in a few hours we get to go home. And like what Scott said, the Bible talks about, in the New Testament especially, you know, you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John written to tell you about the life of, of Christ. You've got Acts written about the, the early church, the establishment of the church, how to become a Christian. Romans through Revelation, if you go read those books over and over and over, you see the apostles and other inspired writers talking about if you're persecuted, you know, basically no matter what happens, even if it's unto death, don't worry, because one yeah. day there's going to be a resurrection and you're going to be resurrected and you're going to end up in heaven if you're faithful to God. So when you put that in perspective with our everyday lives, no matter what you're going through, I mean, we have a lot of close friends, you know, Megan, who's a real great friend of ours, yeah. who's got a really, is dealing with a really lot of health issues right now. But the one thing she knows is that as long as she's faithful and she just sticks with it, it's get one of these days, you know, and anyone else, anyone going through that. No matter what happens, if you stay faithful, one day, whenever we all have to leave this earth, no, none of us are going to escape that. Hebrews 9.27 says what? It's appointed once for man to die, yeah. and then the judgment. So yeah. every single person is not going to escape that, you know? Um, and so, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to make a note. So the heart behind these films, they are short, but it's the idea that hopefully they can help you think just a little outside the box um, to get you thinking a little different. You know, Jesus used different ways of reaching people. Well, we thought, well, maybe this could be one way. Um, to maybe help someone think a little outside the box. Um, one note I want to add is that we uh, one of the reasons they're kind of short is because we film these in like 36 hours, all 10 of these. Um, and one thing I want to note as we dive into, before we dive into all these, is that you're going to see a thread, I think, of who Jesus is from like the first idea of camping out on earth, that your time here is short, and how it builds up to episode 10 is, you're going to see the thread of Jesus, his character, what he went through, um, and hopefully, you yeah. know, make you think a little different. Yeah. You know, w- w- the idea of our bodies being a tent or dwelling on earth temporarily is not something that you only see in a few places like Second Corinthians 5. Like, uh, if you go to Hebrews chapter 11, we referenced this one in uh, in the episode 1 too. Um, in Hebrews chapter 11... Uh, you've got the hall of fame of faith, right? All these people who by faith did something. They didn't have faith and they just sat on their hands, right? In the Bible, faith is trusting God conjoined with obedience, right? If you have somebody that says they believe, but they're not obedient, that's not Bible faith. James 2 says that's dead faith. So if you want a saving faith, you have to have a belief that motivates you to act and obey God. And so in Hebrews chapter 11, you have all these different, you know, um, all these different stories. If I go to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 8, it says, by faith, Abraham, what? When he was called. Yes. By faith, Abraham obeyed right. when he was called. So he was, by faith, he obeyed, right? right? When he was called to go out to the place that he would receive as an inheritance. That's Genesis chapter 12, if you want to go back and read that story, mm-hmm. right? And he went out not knowing where he was going. Do I, do I know everything about heaven? Do I know what it's going to be like? No. No. But no. I trust God, right? I got right. faith. <laughs> and so he, he, by faith, not knowing where he was going, he went. 
By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise, as in a what kind of country? Is it foreign? foreign. Yeah. 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 What's your say? A land not his own. Land not ASV. his own. Okay. ASV, yeah. land not his own. The New King James, a foreign country. Dwelling in what? Tents. Tents. Yeah. For like, I think if you do the math, it's like 100 years. He dwelt in tents, right? And here's why. With Isaac and Jacob, okay, the heirs, his sons, of him of the same promise. And here's why he dwelled in tents for 100 years. You know, we, we say, hey, we're going to come camp and dwell in tents for like a few nights, right? For like a night. Yeah. Why? Well, because, you know, we can go home to our warm houses. Abraham, you know, he's, he's the father of faith. He took it to a whole nother level. He dwelt in tents for, what, 100 years? And here's why. Verse 10. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. All right, what city is that? Go down and look at verse 16. But now they desire a better, that is a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a what? A city. A city for them. So there's this idea of city, a dwelling place. Is heaven going to be an individual city? I mean, I I don't really really even know. I mean, the Bible obviously uses descriptive language to convey messages. Yeah. Um, when you go to Revelation, though, it's it's conveyed in that as what? What's that vision? It's conveyed as a city, right? Yeah. yeah. So this idea is that Abraham and them lived on earth for, I mean, over 100 years, but he dwelt in tents for at least 100 years, maybe longer, because he was looking for what? He was looking for something else. He was looking forward to heaven, that, that permanent place. He wasn't really concerned about that place. It's kind of like it's kind of like today, like a modern example is like backpackers today, right? They travel through different lands, but they don't necessarily, they don't stop and take up residence. They're, they're travelers. So yeah, we dwell uh, among people if we're backpackers, if we're travelers and things like that while we while we go through that land. But it's, 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 it's just a place that we're temporarily going. We're not stopping and setting up shops. So it's kind of like, yeah. you know, I guess you can kind of think of it that way. You know, we're we're seeing things, we're meeting people, we're having different experiences, but uh, but ultimately this isn't home. And yeah. we've got a place that we're looking forward to being back to one day, right? Or being to it for the first time, talking about heaven. Yeah. But uh, just in that illustration, you know, that's that's what it's kind of like in the modern day example. We're, we're what do they call it in the Old Testament? Sojourner. Sojourning, Sojourning yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Right, you're just traveling through. Abraham didn't look at the land and say, well, right over there, I'd like to lay a foundation and I put up a barn right there and I keep my cattle in that one and I like to build a house over there and I'll need a silo right there. Um, you know, his, his concern was a, a little bit different. Yeah. I mean, you think about, you know, a hundred years, right? You say, well, a hundred years, that's a long time. I could really set up a really nice establishment. It's like, well, what if I said, hey, you're going to be on this property for one week? You'd be like, well, there's no point in doing too much work. I'm here for a week. All right. What if it's about six weeks? Well, all right. What about a year? What about two years? What about t- 10 years? Like it's all really relative, you know, it as is. to how long you're going to be here. It kind of reminds me of the parable um, in the New Testament, the man who yeah. built a new barn, Bigger right? Barns, he had so yeah. much, so he builds a new barn, right? And yeah. then what happens? His soul was required of him. Right, he dies. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So it, it, the point is, spiritually speaking, it's not, it's not don't build a house, don't build a barn, don't, don't have a residence here on earth. That's not the point. Uh, the point is keeping your perspective. Yeah remembering that this is not where you're going to spend eternity. Yeah. So don't put all of your heart and energy and soul yeah. into building up something here, growing old and then dying and, 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 and looking at the way that, you know, the writer of Ecclesiastes says, right? Yeah. right? What, what does it matter? All vanity. I mean, it's vanity. Yep. At the end of the day, uh, what happens to the dead? They're remembered not. Like yeah. At some point we grow old, we die and our children remember us for a while and our grandchildren, but eventually we're forgotten. I mean, very few exceptions to that. And even those who, who are like the people of history, Alexander the Great and the emperors of Rome. I mean, they're, they're still dead. Their empires are still gone. I mean, Alexander the Great, I've literally yeah. asked people, do you know who Alexander the Great is? And they're like, no. I'm like, yeah. okay, well. Yeah, even that's specific, right? Yeah. That uh, proves the point. I mean, yeah. Uh, it's but, just, it's not, this isn't it. No, you're right. It's perspective because it's like, if you understand, look, First Timothy 6, uh, it's, I don't know if it's 16 through 18. One of them says to the rich in this present age, Basically, he, he says, do good works. It doesn't say if you're rich in this present age, you're a sinner. You can be rich, but when you're rich, you need to have that right perspective and use that money, those resources to do good works, to help other people, right? Yeah. So it's, you can have earthly possessions. Abraham was wealthy and he's still called, you know, the father of faith, right? The father of the faithful because of how his perspective was right. Um, when we look at pitching our tent on earth, we said this in episode one, the Bible says in John chapter one, right? You've got this John one 
1 through 18, just incredible passage. It gives you so much theologically about Jesus. And John 1, 1, um, I'm paraphrasing, says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That word was is um, in the tense it's in means it's showing Jesus was eternal, right? Mm -hmm. So Jesus, of course, he got the name Jesus. Yeah, Jesus always was. Jesus, he didn't get the name Jesus till he was incarnated as a human, but he was the second person of Godhead eternally. Mm -hmm. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, okay? He's not called the Son of God till he comes to earth in human form also. But So you have the three people of the Godhead. Let's call them the Word. In the beginning was the Word, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 14 says the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We talked about this. What does that word dwelt mean? It's it's the verb form of of a word in Greek that means he he did what? He pitched his He pitched his tent. He pitched his tent. Mm, yeah. So John 1 14, you could translate that. The word became flesh and pitched his tent among us. Yeah, he left that permanent for a temporary dwelling. So kind of like the opposite for a short time. He became the backpacker, so to speak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So he left that permanent for the temporary kind of like those backpackers, but he never intended to stay. So it wasn't like he was on a vacation like the backpackers, but yeah. he came down to accomplish something. Yeah. And it's like, please forgive this analogy. I'm not trying at all to compare it, but, you know, we left our nice warm houses, our nice, nice office building for a short time to come here and do this, and we're going back, right? Yeah. Jesus left where? Yeah, heaven. Heaven. Right. He left heaven. I mean, if yeah. you think about what he left – um, let's okay go to i mean i don't know what passage to go to i think we're going to talk about isaiah 6 later you want to go to isaiah 6 yeah we can okay go to isaiah 6 i'm not sure if we talk about this and i forget what we've talked about in what episodes and what we haven't but if you go to isaiah chapter 6 you have this passage that i know scott has talked about in uh, one of the podcast episodes maybe the one on the gospel but if you go to isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 through 6 you've got this idea tucker do you want to read um yeah. You, okay. Do you want to read six? Read just like one. Actually, why not? Read one through, one through six. All right. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled with filled the temple. Above him stood the uh, seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and the two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, "Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory." And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of who called of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Uh, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin is atoned for. Okay. So basically you have this Isaiah who I remember in the podcast now, Scott said, By all accounts we have, he is a righteous man. He's a prophet of God, right? I think that's what he said. And so you have this man who has a vision of who it says, the Lord of hosts, my eyes have seen the king. All right. Now, John 1, 18 says no one has seen God the Father at any time. All right. So you got three members of the Godhead, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Well, you might not know who Isaiah is seeing in chapters, uh, in Isaiah 6, but when you go to the New Testament, you go to the book of John, I think it's John 12, 41, you've got an explanation by an inspired writer of who Isaiah saw. John chapter 41, and obviously in verse 40, if you look, he quotes Isaiah 6.10. So he quotes Isaiah 6. So you know that's the context. Verse 41, these things Isaiah said when he saw his glory and spoke of him. So the glory that Isaiah saw in in, uh, Isaiah 6 is of who? It's of Jesus. It's of Jesus. So yeah, he sees the word and he's in this like, he's undone. He just sees this glory and this and this this is an idea of the glory Jesus had before yeah, he, he said, Woe unto me. Right? Woe unto I'm me. A man of unclean lips. He's a prophet. A prophet with unclean lips. Yeah. I mean, can you yeah. imagine like let's say you have the most godly man on the face of the earth today saying, I'm so ungodly in your presence. Yeah. I have unclean yeah. lips. It's like you're 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 one of his representatives, you know? Yeah. And yet he says he's undone. And that's Jesus. And Jesus decides the word, decides to leave heaven to come here and pitch his you know, pitch his tent on earth with men to fulfill the most important, you know, mission ever, which is to seek and save the lost, you know? Yeah. When I was driving here this morning, um, I was thinking it brought me back to like Romans chapter one, especially with camping. Um, and I think you'll see it throughout all the episodes is nature. Um, people that maybe don't believe God. I mean, we all come to agreement that nature is beautiful, uh, from the bumblebee to a tree, to a lake out here. Um, 
and really wrapping our minds around the idea that Jesus came here for a little while. Um, he pitched his tent and he was on a mission. Um, and we'll be able to flesh that out throughout the rest of these episodes, but, yeah. um, all building up for a purpose and then a, a purpose for us to walk away with, to have that hope of, uh, man, I keep going back to making your reservation. Like yeah. you said, yeah. And, yeah. To teach well, it, us, to save us and then to show us his character. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And at the end of that, it's a good transition actually, cause I was trying to figure out where I wanted to go next. At the end of the episode, um, basically it shows my voiceover saying, have you made your reservation yet? Right. Is that episode one? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> you, you, uh, Tucker edited it for hours, so he'll, he'll remember. <laughs> but you're talking about, like you said, have you made your reservation yet? Yeah. We've said this many times. Like, if you're watching this and you're a Christian, good. Like, we want to encourage you. You know, we've went through a lot of the same things that you went through. I have people that will reach out that watch the podcast and say, you know, well, look, I got something I'm struggling with. And I'm like, yeah, I've struggled with the same thing. Yeah. You know, so – we have that. And then we're also trying, if you're a non-Christian or you're someone who's considering Christianity, like our ultimate goal is to try to help you see that the Bible is the word of God. You know, so I think some people have this idea that Christianity, God serving him, the Bible's only for Christians. No, every single person that walks the face of this earth is created by God. And so we want you to see, hey, we, we know what your purpose is. If you're looking for meaning, we know what that is. And it's found in God. And so throughout this podcast, we want to uh, try to help you see what your purpose is, and that is yeah. to seek uh, to to seek out God and to find Him. Um, in Philippians two five through eight, um, going yeah. along the line with the thread, yeah. kind of the heart of who Jesus is. He came here for a little while. Um, I think Scott said it in one of the episodes, or no, I think Aaron it was actually you, but that Jesus came and He was one of us. You know, um, so if you go to Philippians two chapter five or Philippians 2 verses 5 have this in mind among yourselves which is yours in Christ Jesus who though he was in the form of God did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form he humbled himself by becoming um, obedient to the point of death even death on the cross um, that, yeah. yeah he was one of us he emptied himself he was here mm-hmm. um, yeah yeah he emptied himself he took a subservient role I mean Everything the Bible says is before he came, uh, before he basically initiated the plan of you know salvation, redemption of mankind, him and God yeah. the Father were equal. And so he emptied himself. He took a subservient role. And if you look in John, he always says his doctrine was not his, but it was, you know, God's and he yeah. was delivering it. But he can't, he left heaven. You know, he's, he's literally God, the creator. We, we still can talk about it. We can't understand it. One day maybe we'll be able to, but what he gave up to come to earth, to live in a human body, which he created, and then to be rejected by the same people that he created. I mean, it's crazy. And the thing about that verse is it says not only did he leave heaven, right, and come and take a human body, right? He was born as a child. But then from there, what we also have is he died the death of a cross. The death of the cross, notice it says, became obedient to the point of death. And then it elaborates even death on the cross. Death on the cross was like embarrassing. It was shameful. It was torture. I mean, and he was the worst. It was the worst, yeah. the worst of the worst. <clears throat> I mean, they only reserve that for like the worst criminals, like Roman citizens in Rome. I don't, I don't think Roman citizens could be it crucified. Was a, it was a torturous death. Yeah. Like I know Paul died from what we know by being beheaded, but you know, they, they would not crucify a Roman citizen. It was so embarrassing. I mean, unless I'm wrong, but I don't think that, I don't think that I'm wrong at that point. But so Jesus left heaven and came to pitch his tent on earth with men. Um, what would you guys say? I mean, any last thoughts? I know we're wrapping up, and I dominated the conversation like I always do, but... Um, oh, man, you didn't need to. I'll just it. say that uh, Ecclesiastes twelve thirteen, like God put eternity into our hearts. Yeah. Um, that's going to play out through the rest of these to make us think a little outside the box. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's a there's a God-shaped void in your heart, and let's figure out what that yeah. is. And twelve thirteen, that you just quoted, what's the duty of the all... The whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. Yeah, that's so. right. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you back in episode number two. And thanks for watching the Authentic Christian Podcast Special Edition Campfire Stories.